హలో ఎవ్రీ వన్ ఐఎమ్ డాక్టర్ ఆతిరా రామకృష్ణన్ ఈఎన్టి హెడ్ నెక్ సర్జన్ ప్రాక్టీసింగ్ ఇన్ బెంగళూరు ఇన్ దిస్ వీడియో వీ గోన్ వోయింగ్ గోయింగ్ టు టాక్ అబౌట్ క్యాన్సర్ ఆఫ్ ద ఓరోఫారింగ్స్ ఓరోఫారింగ్స్ ఈజ్ దాట్ పోర్షన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఇన్ ద బ్యాక్ ఆఫ్ ద త్రూట్ విచ్ హ్యాస్ ద టాన్సిల్స్ ద ద రీజన్ ఇన్ బిట్వీన్ ద టాన్సిల్స్ అండ్ వేర్ ద బేస్ ఆఫ్ ద టంగ్ రిసైడ్స్ in each area of head and neck cancer we have multiple areas where cancer can originate and they are called subsites oropharynx is the main sites and subsites are tonsils the posterior pharyngeal wall which is the back part of the throat and base of tongue which is the root of the tongue where the muscle attaches the tongue to the neck muscles so each of the sites can have cancers usually these cancers are seen in elderly males slightly more than females and people who smoke a lot the, especially people who smoke and they keep the fume in the throat they can have this cancer because of repeated exposure of that area to tobacco there is another kind of oropharyngeal cancer which is called hpv or human papilloma virus related cancer which can also arise in this region this cancer has been associated with increased um, exposure to hpv through oral sex and uh, which has been seen in affluent countries especially in america in india currently we are seeing that the tobacco related oropharyngeal cancer is more common but in affluent segments in india also the hpv related cancer has been detected the importance of the hpv related cancer is that it has slightly better prognosis compared to the tobacco related cancer and uh, in some studies have shown that we don't need to treat it as aggressively as the tobacco related cancer what are the symptoms of oropharyngeal cancer oropharyngeal cancer can present with difficulty in swallowing change in voice the voice is typically called that hot potato voice like a person is talking with something hot in uh, sitting in their mouth and slow dif- uh, progressive difficulty in swallowing so such patients can have cancers arising from the tonsil which may be initially not seen they slowly start spreading into the mouth and back part of the throat and starts filling the throat so when it is very big the patient can present with difficulty in swallowing change in voice and also this area has lot of lymphatics which allow the cancer to spread through the lymph glands in the neck or the lymph nodes in the neck so patient can still present you with the swelling of the lymph nodes in the neck either side because the oropharynx is a midline structure the lymph can spread to both sides of the neck how do we diagnose the oropharyngeal cancer we diagnose the oropharyngeal cancer by determining where it is originating from our examination will show whether it is coming from the tonsil or the base of tongue or the back wall of the throat either any of the sites can should be if it is originating from should be biopsied which involves removing a small piece of the tissue to see under microscope if the lymph nodes are enlarged you need to biopsy them as well through a technique called fine needle aspiration cytology Uh, because the spread to the lymph nodes increases the stage of the cancer so once this diagnosis is made you need to do a ct scan of the head and neck area and also ct scan of the chest to find out the extent of the tumor how far it has spread to the lymph nodes it has it involved the surrounding structures has the lymph nodes got stuck to any structures in the neck or it has involved any organs like lung bone etc most of the cases in our practice we are seeing we we use a pet scan nowadays to see the whole body in a case of cancer pet scan gives a whole body scan which will tell us not only the extent of the primary cancer but also whether it has spread to any other area in the body agreed it is being misused in a lot of cases but in oropharyngeal and esophageal cancers it is the best investigation for diagnosis and staging so once that we have diagnosed stage the lesion we have to start the treatment majority of the cases stage 1 and 2 cancers are treated with radiation alone or radiation with chemotherapy in uh, very small uh, tonsillar cancers or if the t- tumor is involved in only one subsite when we can remove it totally with a good margin of soft tissue around it we can go for a surgery called transoral robotic surgery or tots which i am specialized in so we use a robo to go into the back part of the throat which is not easily accessed in a regular surgery robotic instrumentation is easily ac- uh, accessible to the back of the throat we use the robotic machine to take the tumor along with the healthy tissue all around this is easily achievable in a robot than a conventional surgery and if if you were to do a conventional surgery to access the back of the throat you actually have to split the lip of the patient you have to actually open the bone of the patient to reach that area which is a very very morbid surgery which 
can be avoided by using a robotic machine. So this uh, surgery involves removing the tumor with a good margin all around and also in robotic surgery we don't have to open the neck and uh, give a bone cut to open the, uh, the, ma uh, the jaw bone of the patient and at the same time you have to do a neck dissection either open or robotic to remove all the lymph nodes which have cancer. Uh, if the patient is opting for cancer, usually it is in stage 1 or 2. Stage 3 onwards, you have to go for mostly radiation with chemotherapy. And if you are going for a surgery, surgery is not the end of the treatment. Depending on the stage and extent of the disease, you may still have to go for radiation of the back of the, uh, that area as well as the neck to prevent the tumor from coming back.